We begin from Sierra Leone, where voters will tomorrow Saturday head to the polls to elect their next president. This is the fifth presidential election since the Civil War ended in 2002. Sierra Leone has seen waves of violence in recent months. Last year, there were deadly anti-government protests over rising cost of living and economic hardship. According to a spokesperson for the Electoral Commission, around 52.4% of registered voters are aged between 18 and 35 years old. Voters will choose between incumbent president Julius Madabio of the Sierra Leone People's Party and Samura Kamara, the leader of main opposition party, the All People's Congress. In a joint statement by the ECOWAS and African Union missions, there are concerns over violence and intimidation reported in some parts of the country. They warned that the incident could mar the peaceful conduct of the elections. The mission met with 13 presidential candidates and called on all political stakeholders to do their part toward ensuring a peaceful electoral process in line with national, regional, and international standards. And joining me on the news at 10 to further discuss the Sierra Leonean elections is publisher at Woko Magazine in Freetown, Sierra Leone, Kelvin Lewis. Good to have you join us. So Sierra Leone has, has come um, a long way um, since the civil, uh, brutal civil war 21 years ago. But this particular election has been referred to as high stakes elections. Um, why is that? Hello. Um, Mr. Kevin, Kevin Lewis, thank, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So I was, I was um, asking you um, why this particular election um, is being referred to as high stakes election, um, especially because Sierra Leone has come a long way since the brutal uh, civil war 21 years ago. What's at stake for Sierra Leone in this particular election? Well, um, the key thing is that two of the men were the same people who took part in the last elections in and uh, they are fighting it out this time around. Um, it is considered high stakes because of the infractions that have happened. The opposition APC has been in court for upwards of some like three years. They've been uh, having cases among themselves. They were not taken to court by the government or the, or the ruling party, but among themselves. And uh, they've been embroiled in this internal conflict such that they are unable to like get themselves together and plan to uh, 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 um, challenge these uh, people. So eventually they got themselves together almost on the deadline before they were allowed to like participate because they had to choose their, their running mates against a certain deadline so that they could be able to, to fill in those names for nomination and take part in the election. So um, having crossed that uh, uh, boundary eventually, there has been accusations and recriminations, accusations and recriminations all along, and the political tension has risen up, and there have been a few clashes here and there, and uh, that is why the whole thing seems to be like high stake. But from uh, um, yesterday and today, I think everybody's calmed down now, mm. and uh, we're going into the elections tomorrow. And all sides are saying, let us go in and vote and vote peacefully. And that's exactly what I want to talk about. We know that the African Union and the ECO and ECOWAS has also raised, um, also raised concerns about this tension. But let's talk about the fact that Sierra Leone is faced with um, a wide range of challenges ahead of this election. Um, from a rising cost of living to food shortages, um, there are also issues around unemployment and corruption. How much role do you th see these challenges playing in, in how people will vote tomorrow? 
Yeah, well, um, the opposition had been upping the stakes on the economic situation. Although the uh, ruling party have been claiming that uh, it is actually out of their hands that uh, the economic situation is being uh, is a result of external forces like the, the war in Ukraine and so on and so forth. But what happened in the last uh, um, one week, in the last one to two weeks, the dollar, which had been falling at a very rapid rate, the Leon has been appreciating. And, and so the economic uh, uh, um, rhetoric has been dying down because um, the, 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 the dollar is, is, has appreciated, the, the Leon has appreciated uh, a lot, in fact, unbelievably. But but it, it's it's rising. It is 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 is. And all all eyes are now um, watching to see whether this election um, will end in a runoff as it was in 2018. Thank you so much for talking to us, um, publisher Awoko Magazine in Freetown, Kev, Kelvin Lewis.